Man, what's up, man? It's your boy Sheriff Kitchen, man. I just jumped out the pool of a dirty grill bass, man. Yeah, kitchen on fire. Yeah, yeah. I'm disappointed in you. So disappointed. Jeffrey Kitchen with us today, man. Welcome to Off the Porch. How you feeling today, man? man? Appreciate you feeling good, feeling good, man. Yeah, appreciate you y'all having me out. Yeah, appreciate you coming by today, man. Uh, uh, what are you working on here in Atlanta today, or actually this this trip that you've been out here? This trip was out here for uh, Don Trips tour. Yeah, one night only tour. Okay. Yeah, you know, out here with him, supporting my brother. Yeah. Did you get into uh, any studios sessions uh, or anything? Not this time. No. We just cooked up at the Airbnb. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I was making a lot of beats. Okay. Worked on some records with Trip. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Staying productive. Yeah. Which city are you looking forward to the most on this tour? This one is actually two. Hmm. Denver and Dallas. Huh. Yeah. So why Denver? Denver just because I haven't got to get out there around this time of the year. Okay. And uh, I like to travel. So like... I've been out the country, seen all kind of stuff, but like with the mm. mountains and snow, I haven't got to experience them in uh, that light yet. So yeah, I'm gonna venture off and probably do some little, you know what I'm saying, a little venturous shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, in Dallas, I think that's like one of the one of trips' biggest markets besides yeah, you know, of course, hometown and everything. And uh, I think that's gonna be one of the biggest shows. Hmm. So I'm looking, and it's the last night of the tour, so we ought to be lit. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, that's the last one in Dallas? Yep, Dallas, okay. yep. For yeah. so right now, maybe add more dates. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, what part of Memphis are you from? I'm from all over. I was born in, uh, when I was born, I was stayed in, in most of my childhood, I stayed in Whitehaven. Okay. Known as Black Haven too, but yeah. then my older years, East Memphis, and uh, now, and right before I moved to Atlanta back in the day, um, Olive Branch, Mississippi, which is like right on the state line. So mm. really all over, yeah. you know what I'm saying? All over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you come from a, a musical family, you know? Most definitely musical family, man. Yeah. Like literally. Yeah. Your literally. parent, both of your parents were in a R&B group. Yep. My, um, my pops was in like a cover band. He played bass guitar. So, okay. And my mom, she was in an R&B group with her sister and one of their friends. Oh, like really? A, hmm. Uh, three of them. Hmm. So kind of like did like in Vogue songs. If you're familiar with in Vogue and, um, uh, J that's an older, older group. Some people may be familiar with them. Had some um, in total, all of that too. Total, huh. all the newer stuff too. And um, now, in present day, hmm. they're in a group together right now. You know, oh what I'm really? Saying? Get out like here. <laughs> more like blues and covering older songs, Earth, hmm. Wind, and Fire, Isley Brothers, yeah, that type of thing. But hmm. yeah, all the way up to. My my granddad played bass for Sam Cooke. Hmm. My um, uncle, which is my grandfather's um, brother, is Seal Johnson. Oh wow! And he's been sampled by many, many from Kanye to hmm. Will Smith, Michael Jackson. Holy shit! A lot of people. So yeah, he's really known in uh, Wu Tang. Like a lot of hip hop people that sample this stuff. Yeah. Um, so like I said, they was they sampled them on Watch the Throne. Oh really? Uh -huh. Won a lot of lawsuits. A lot of lawsuits. <laughs> oh, so they weren't clearing these samples. Yeah, they at were first. some of not not Wu Tang. Wu Tang is probably one of the ones that did it the right way, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But a lot of the other ones, they didn't really know. Maybe they didn't know how to, you know, reach out, but Hmm. Unk, he wasn't playing, you feel me? He was coming back for everything, you hear me? <laughs> Absolutely, you know? To this day, to this day. <laughs> yeah. And then my cousin is Selena Johnson, which um, hmm. if the most notable thing she was on was Kanye West, All Falls Down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and Kanye Huge West even record. shouted her out at the end of the song. Yep, uh-huh. Yep. Yep. Because uh, sure I think uh, Lauryn Hill was originally on that song, mm -hmm. and for whatever reason, they couldn't get her on it, so he needed a replacement. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, musical background for sure. Like, started playing drums when I was about three years old. So <laughs> that's where they beat those drums come from. Yeah, you know, the tags <laughs> you be hearing. You know what I'm saying? And you used to perform with your dad on stage too. Yep, like huh. about five, six. 
I was pretty good. I started around three, but I, I picked up, you know, pretty good. And yeah. he used to let me do a couple of gigs with him, you know what I'm saying? Bring his uh-huh. son out, let him play the drum, cut up on him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you get to play some solos there or? Man, yep, solos really? and everything. Uh-huh. Yep, for He's real. He's letting you shine early. Yeah, let me shine early, man. Yeah. You hear me? Introduce me to it early. Yeah, so you enjoyed that right away then, huh? I really did, man. Mm-hmm. Just like from that to go, being able to go to their rehearsals and watch them, you know, perfect their stage shows and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Been around it all my life, like literally. Like hmm. I can remember being a baby, them re- re- rehearsing in the living room and stuff like that. Yeah. I remember it like it was yesterday. Yeah. So did you know you were going to be into music as well at a young yes, age? Yes, I yeah. pretty much did because like I said, my mom was in a group with my auntie. So mm-hmm. me and my cousin, we were real close because they always rehearsing real close knit family and so while they would be rehearsing, we'll be in the bedroom instead of playing. We back there rehearsing and writing songs and you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, so I always knew it was what I wanted to do, you know what I'm saying? And as I got older, started getting more serious about it. This is how I really started, <clears throat> how I'm engineering and learned yeah. how to run a lot of equipment. My pops had a lot of equipment in storage and he was like, hmm. you always talking about this, you want to do this now. I'm, I, I got this stuff. He kept telling me about it for years, a couple of years, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And when we finally moved into the house where he ended up building the studio in there, mm-hmm. he got all the equipment out, had one of his friends come and show me like a little rundown and I picked up on it like that, you know what I'm uh-huh. saying? And ever since then, I've been I've been doing my thing, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Mm-hmm. And running studios, you know, setting up people's studios, having my own studio, so. I've always been around it since a young age. Yeah. Yeah. What equipment did you start off with back then? Um, the first piece of equipment that I got from him to use at the studio was an eight track recorder. Oh wow. <laughs> oh wow. From yeah. back in their days, and but it was something that I could experiment with. You know mm. what I'm saying? It wasn't too expensive. You just had to buy a blank tape and. Yeah. So that's, then we went from that to ADAT machines, okay. which are like VCR tapes. Yeah. And uh, this is all stuff that my dad had that I, he would let me use of his stuff, you know. And then when I started getting more serious, then you know, start you know you got your Pro Tools and yeah, and it was it's all the same. I didn't have to have nobody <laughs> show me how to use it because it's all the same. Everything from making beats to engineering, it's all got the same, you know, what I'm saying principle, the same objective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And did you show your pops out of you pro-, pro Tools or anything like that? Have you tried to keep them up to date? Okay, yes I did. <laughs> so check this out, this is gonna be pretty dope. Some producers probably gonna fuck with this right here. Hmm. But what I used to do, my dad, like I say, he played bass and one of his partners played lead guitar. So I used to get to, and still do get them on a lot of things. But oh, wow. hmm. uh, Apple has updated this shit so you can't still do it the way we used to do it. But what I used to do, he couldn't use Pro Tools. Like I. Hmm. Taught him, I think he got it more now, but in the early days when I taught him, what we used to do was used to have, um, what was it called? It's like I, it's like um, FaceTime, but it used to be called like iChat or something on, yeah, on the yeah. old MacBooks. And what you could do is, I got him a laptop, put Pro Tools on his laptop, got him a little interface, just explain to him, hey, hmm. open it up, cut this on, plug this up. And then what I could do for my, because I stayed in Atlanta for 10 years, what I used to do is I would, you could screen share, but when he sc- shared his screen with me, yeah. you can actually operate his computer. Oh, wow. So okay. I would just have him plug his bass up, I email <laughs> him the beat, or email the beat to myself, and then on his computer, I open it up in the email, download it, import it in the Pro Tools, <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm for the, when they come on, start playing the bass, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So I was oh, recording wow. from Atlanta while he was in Memphis. Huh. So that's how I kind of really show him because he don't have no choice but to sit there and wait on me. And <laughs> all right, okay, you ready? And he's seeing what I'm pushing on the screen because he's watching his screen. Huh. So that's a little little secret, little thing I used to have, how I used to get live yeah. bass from him why I couldn't touch him actually in person. Yeah, that's really dope. Yeah. How long ago was that? What, about 10 years ago or? About, probably so, close to 10 years now. Mm-hmm. Maybe about nine, eight, nine, 10 years, between eight and 10 years, yeah. yep. Okay, okay. So at what, what age did you start producing, or actually making beats? 
at the age I started making beats was probably around at a young age, man, really, because how I got into making beats, I was in a rap group and we didn't want to pay for beats. <laughs> and you know, it's funny because back then people were selling beats for like a hundred dollars, yeah, fifty dollars. I'm talking about like all out, like you in the studio, and that shit was like, damn, you want a hundred dollars? Like, <laughs> so we went, went in on the keyboard, got a keyboard. I taught myself how to use it, started making our own beats, and then from there, like that was maybe like two, three years out out of high school. From there, I just grew I, I, I grew a, a passion for making beats more than mm. rapping. Okay. And I used to also notice like in Memphis, different people, gangster black, player fly, different people were more susceptible to me as a producer mm. and working versus a rapper. Yeah. And you know, after a while I was just like, hey, I'm just gonna, you know, this is working out for me more. I'm having a lot of success doing this versus this hmm. and I just dropped that totally and concentrated on producing and, and here we are 10 years later. Yeah. 11, 12 years later, you know what I'm saying? And it's, it's going up, you know what I'm saying? It's working out for me. Yeah. And you used to go by Beat Those Drums, right? I used to go by Chef. Okay. But Beat Those Drums has always been my tag. So a lot of people yeah. that used to get my beats through email. They didn't know what, you know, so they just heard the tag beat those drums. So it's been out there a couple of times where tracks have been created as produced yeah. by beat those drums. Mm -hmm. A lot of people call me beat those drums, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I started branding Chef for Kitchen. And it, like I said, it started off, I was just Chef. And one of my homies used to joke with me and call me Chefry, just joking around, hmm. like just being playful. And one day it just clicked, it was like, you know what? Plus, I, I used to hear about another little chef from my hometown, so I was like, I didn't want nobody to get us confused because we didn't got confused a couple of times. Hmm. Me for him and him for me. Hmm. We're different known artists from Memphis, so I was like, you know what, Sheffrey, it's catchy, Kitchen. Like, hmm. No, like a first name, last name, Sheffrey Kitchen. <clears throat> so he went with that and been running with that ever since, but to beat those yeah. drums, that's where it started. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I started playing with the drums, you know what I'm saying? On the drums, how I was introduced to music. So it was only right to keep that as my tag and yeah. run with it. And people, like it's a, uh, what's her name? Ebony, you know, you know, familiar with Ebony Love? Mm -hmm. I met Ebony Love one time and she was working with uh, Drummer Boy and Insane Wayne. I had, did a lot of work with them, one of my, my close homies, Recipes, uh, Insane Wayne, like a big brother to me. Mm -hmm. But, um, I met her at a party, a drum squad party one time, and I was introducing myself, and she was like, hey, you you got the tag, beat those drums? Hmm. And I was like, yeah, she was like, baby, do me one thing, do me a favor now. She was like, cause you got some hot, hot shit, but never change your tag, like, <laughs> yeah, I, I love that, you know what I'm saying? And it's always stuck with me, so probably won't never be changing the tag, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nah, you gotta keep that You one. gotta keep that. It's you gotta just, keep that. It's, it's, it's part of the brand right. at this point. You know? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, did any producers influence your sound? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. And I would say mostly it would probably have to be um, the older day, like 3-6 growing up, because I'm from Memphis, so growing yeah. up on the 3-6, that sound, DJ Squeaky, um, Insane Wayne, Drummer Boy, that's pretty much the people that I was influenced by, you know what I'm saying? As well as um, having respect for like live instrumentation mm -hmm. um, from like the older people that my dad and them, I grew up listening to with them like uh, Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis, do a lot of stuff for Janet and um, as well as like the Jodeci, Devontae, the R&B shit. Cause I, I fuck, really fuck with the R&B shit for real, for real. Like I said, my, my dad did the live band thing my mom she was like mm -hmm. on the r&b stuff so yeah kind of my music has like real musical shit going on in yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah and uh do you remember what your first big placement was my first big placement was um mr n and uh featuring yo Gotti. it was called hottest mm -hmm. chick in the town that was my huh. my that was i would say my one of my first biggest yeah you know what i'm saying i was right when i moved to atlanta like 
like that was around that crossover time. I started producing and like like I said, Gangsta Blacks and different people, Mr. N was popping then. And uh yeah, it was it was, it was did some numbers, you know what I'm saying? Introduced me to them BMI checks. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Yeah. And how did you link up with uh Drummer Boy and uh his brother? All right, so Wayne? Drummer Boy, I met him through Insane Wayne and Okay. Insane Wayne used to, it's funny, like I met him again later on when I was an adult, like older, but we, when he came over to my house one time to work in the studio that I had in my, my parents' house, the studio they uh, had in their crib, he seen my mom and my dad and they knew him. Hmm. So it turned out that he used to cut my hair at the beauty shop that my mom went to when, we was, when I was younger. <laughs> he, he was the barber that used to cut my hair and I remember it like, then I wanted to do music. He used to be telling us like, I was in the studio last night with A-Ball, MJG, you know what uh -huh. I'm saying, boom, boom. And for that shit to come back around, to lose touch and just come back full circle through another way of meeting, that was dope. But, so that's how I was introduced to Insane Wayne. I was real close with Insane. Therefore, Insane brother being drummer boy, I was introduced to drummer boy and yeah. he was taking, he took a liking to the things I was doing at that mm. time. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I actually, when I moved to Atlanta, I was, uh, uh, active member in drum squad, so that's where okay. I came. I was down yeah. here doing when I first came, so hmm. it was really love. So I always love with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, how'd you link up with uh, Starlito? Starlito, internet days, man. We get the beginning Twitters and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So that's how <laughs> yeah. I, how I actually linked with Lito and um, sent him some beats. He was fucking with it. So one of the first songs we ever did was um, on Free at Last. Um, called uh, Let Me Hit That. Hmm. So that's one of the first <laughs> jumps I did, and it was, that's basically how it came about. Reached out to him on Twitter, Yeah, got his email. <clears throat> I always kept feeding him beats, hmm. got that one. And then later on, you know what I'm saying, kind of lost touch for a lot of years, and I got hmm. back with him through another guy I was working with that wanted to get a feature. And that's a whole conversation in this place. Like, that's how a lot of <laughs> shit just, it's like a, a, a ripple effect, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Domino effect. Mm -hmm. And uh, you do a lot of work with uh, Don Tripp. Yep, a yep. lot of work with Don Tripp. So so I'll tell you the little story I was saying to let you know how I got from, how that even linked up. So I got with Lido to do a feature and I hit him up and we had probably worked like, been like a couple of years since we had worked. So we kind of mm -hmm. hadn't been speaking just doing my thing, him doing his thing. So I hit him up about the feature and I was in Memphis. He was like, actually I'm in Memphis, you know what I'm saying? Pull up to the studio. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was like, shit, cause my partner ready right now, you know what I'm saying? He finna send me bread right now, boom, boom. So my partner sent me the bread, Walmart to Walmart, you know, picked the <laughs> bread up, pulled up to the studio, he get, sent me the address, pulled up and we, uh, he knocked out the feature. So when he got through knocking out the feature, I had this beat that I had made the night before and I was like, this, it was just dope how this happened because I heard him on it, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So I was like, hey, why y'all, they was bouncing it down and sending the session, we transferred. So I was like, while we killing time, let me let you hear this beat that I made. He was like, yeah, pull it up, email it to me. So I emailed it to him, engineer pulled it up, started playing it, went off, he was like, pull it up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Pull it up, like ASAP. I'm like, shit, that's what's up, you feel me? That ain't what I'm here for, but yeah, that's what I thought <laughs> I heard you on this bitch. So he started dropping to it and shit, and then after he got about halfway through dropping what he was doing out of the corner of my eye, I see somebody stretching, you know what I'm saying? Coming to the view, stretching and turning left, it's, it's Trip. Hmm. He was in the back, we was at Trip studio, and he was, I didn't know at the time, but he was in the back sleep. <laughs> so he woke up, and man, came in there and ripped that shit. And that's what turned out to be uh, do what I gotta do. You know what oh, I'm really? So that's how I started huh. working with Trip. And then from there, me and Trip kept working, and man, the rest is history. Yeah. What's it like working with him? It's amazing, bro. It's like he's the perfect complement to a producer. Hmm. It, you know, a dope producer at that too. So, like, he's his work ethic and the shit that he how he worked too is, it ain't even like you working. It's like you just, you chilling with your partner. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? He playing chess, you know what <laughs> I'm saying? He got his laptop out. You know, you, somebody think he down there doing a paper or something, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but he, he over there typing up his verse, you know what I'm saying? And uh. 
he and when he does it, man, it's like one take, like no cap, like one take. You, it's no punch ins on on trip shit. Mm -hmm. Very very seldom. It might be on just very seldom. Like he's the first first person I work with that go from beginning to end, like hook to the last hook. Like he he's not flying no hooks. He's going from beginning to end, and that mm -hmm. shit be flawless. Mm -hmm. Like he amazing, bro. He one of the my most favorite people to work with. He does everything that he does is 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 on a high level. Yeah. And you guys uh worked on an entire project together, uh Christopher. Yep, Christopher. Yeah. Where did that idea come from? So that idea just came from us linking after the um I think it was after the Step Brothers tour. I think Lido had a Lido and Friends uh show in Memphis and we linked up, chopped it up, exchanged numbers, and he was like, you know, hit me up, we can work, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm trying to work. So I hit him up and we linked up. I went to the studio, we worked out, did it, I think like two songs the first time we linked. Yeah. He was like, what you doing tomorrow, Craig? When we getting ready to leave, you know? <laughs> like, what you doing tomorrow, Craig? I'm like, shit, what you doing? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm back in here, you back in here? He like, shit, yeah, say no more. I'm pull back up tomorrow, so I'll pull back up the next day. Hmm. Did another song. You know, like I said, it ain't like you work, it's like you just chilling with your partner. So yeah. at the end of the night, after we just, you know, listening back to the records or whatever, or just chopping it up, like what you doing tomorrow? <laughs> I'm like, shit, man, I'm back in here. I'm back in here again. So this time when I go home, I cook up like three beats. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then the day before, the next day before I go to the studio, I cook up like two more beats, go to the studio. And I'm like, at this time, I've been thinking about it. I'm like, man, we got like three songs in two days and we for to do another two, three a day. So I, after we did them, I was like, man, what you think about doing a project? You know what I'm saying? He was like, I'm with it, I'm with it. Let's, yeah. let's do it, we we already so many in, let's, let's do it. <laughs> what you doing tomorrow? I'm like, I'm back here again. So that's how we got to working on Christopher and we knocked that out and it was a, it was a real monumental, uh, time in my like in my career, man. Just somebody of that caliber with his skill set, trusting in me to shape the whole sound of his album. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it turned out real great. Like I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, can fans expect a sequel? Possibly. Possibly. You know what I'm saying? Possibly. <laughs> we in the kitchen. We in the kitchen, man. We on tour. We working. We working in every city. So. <clears throat> okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Stay tuned. You know. I got you. And yeah. I yeah. And on his new album, uh, They Don't Love You, you produced a song, uh, Disappointed, that fans have really been uh, loving. Yeah, me and my partner Throw It On The Beat out of Dallas, we produced that record together. And um, okay. that was one of them ones, man, like like on the album before, in between Christopher and that one, I had like a seven or something like that on the, the album before, um, They Don't Love You. And um, so on this one, it was like, I knew he was working, but I was working too with my artists and just, Mm -hmm. You know, being a dad too, just moving around. So we didn't get to really get in the studio that much. So when he was almost wrapping up, we got in the studio, kind of like with Not Today. It was at the album about to be done. And um, went in, I had this beat that we did, me and my partner did like the day before. I went to the studio with him and I was like, man, this shit is this special. I, I can hear him on here, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it sound like him. We went to the studio, played it. He killed that shit. Like, I was sitting there recording him because I engineer for him sometimes. So while I was recording him and I was hearing this shit because you don't know what he's saying hmm. until you go in the studio. Because yeah. like I said, he's typing on a, on a laptop <laughs> or the an iPad and then he ain't saying nothing. He's saying all this shit in his head. Then when he go in the booth, you like, wow, that man was over there putting that shit together. That effort was like, hmm. that's crazy. Hmm. Like he's super gifted. Yeah. Yeah, what's it like, uh, you know, reading the comments about the fans really loving the record and everything too? It's amazing. Like I, I made a post one time about it. Like, I, it, it be a lot of haters, man, in the comments. You know what I'm saying? Like on just general and people comments. But hmm. he has like this man has like the most positive feedback on every song that he put out. Like, but with his disappointed, it's like everybody is talking about it from from. Yo, yo, hard ass niggas talking about that know 
they might have something going on with their kid where they can't get to them, whatever, yeah. saying they done made, they shed some tears to people who is a, whether female or male, that didn't experience that with their parents, just saying they didn't touch them. Like, and he, that's the kind of music he make, heartfelt, you know what I mean, to yeah. me, like real meaningful. Mm -hmm. And do you have a personal favorite song that you have produced for a Don Trip? Yep, I would say it would have to be Fake News. Fake News. Yeah, mm. that's Why probably that? my favorite record. And besides it being hard as fuck, it's just the way that it came about. Like, I mm. shout out to my homie Shroom. Uh, we collabed on that bitch. But man, when I heard this, like, this, cause uh, Shroom, he make original samples, like mm -hmm. sound like samples, but it's not, it's our original composition. But mm -hmm. when I heard this shit that I, uh, from him, I was just like, man, I always knew it. it was always sitting to the side, but I always knew I was like, that shit is a hard ass sample for it's some shit for Trip and, and Lido. So when we were working on a Christopher album, I pulled it out, you know what I'm saying? And I cooked up something real quick right before I went to the studio because I wanted him to hear it. So it was really just like a little drum pattern on it, wasn't no kind of formatted, no intro, no outro, no, no nothing, just hear, tell me what you think. And he was like, I fuck with it, Craig, you know, go on, send it to him and uh, let's let's do it, I can fuck with it. So, sent it to him, sent it to Lido, Lido sent it back, and man, hmm. Trip killed that motherfucker and the rest is history. Yeah. Shout out to my my guy Trumpet dude too, on the, on the trumpet with the horn section, helped me put that together at the end of it. Okay, yeah. Like real monumental, like it's, it's that's why I think I like it too because it's it's elements of what I was raised with, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. Live instrumentation, you know, with a still kind of R and B feel, but you know they was speaking that real shit on there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, you've been working with uh, Eight Ball and MJG uh, yep. lately. I yep. work real close with Eight Ball and MJG, them my big brothers. Um, I got some shit with. Uh, I don't know if he's gonna put it on this project that we're working on together, me and Bob, but hmm. we got a, a hard ass uh, record that should be coming out on his solo project, whether it's the one that we, I'm gonna you know, give y'all a little inside and I'm gonna executive produce, huh. or if it's one that he gonna put out before then. But yeah, they're my brothers. We got plenty of unreleased work hmm. and um, I really look up to him, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate them being big brothers to me. Yeah, 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 there's some legends in the game, you know? Like real legends, man, <clears throat> down to earth, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Get a lot of gems from the guy. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you also have placements with 2 Chains, uh, Scarface, Gucci, Boozy, many more. Um, what's your process for sending out beats? Man, really my process is, I like to get be in, the, in, the, in there working with you hands on, but hmm. I really, man, how I look at it is my motto is kind of like, plant as many seeds as you can. Okay. And I'm gonna give give out some game. Cause I said when I did the interview, I did want to drop some game for producers. So hmm. my thing is, man, you know, and y'all thank me later, but just work. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Just work, plant seeds, and you know what I'm saying? You Some shit gonna sprout up, you know what I'm saying? So, but if you really like on the nigga ass about some little money up front and this and that, you know, I understand some people need it right then, you know, but if you really believe in your craft and you got some some work put aside that you can invest, that is what I suggest. Like, just go get the work in with people. Don't always chase the big placements. Hmm. You know, fuck with the upcoming people because everybody got to come from somewhere, you know what I'm saying? Everybody yeah. come from being a nobody to somebody, you know what I mean? So just work as much as you can, you know, Work as much as you can, man, and, and stay working. Yeah. You know? But don't don't be chasing that little money up front. Like, be willing to put in that work because that's what I do. Mm -hmm. You know, and I have a lot of success. It's it's working for me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if you just have your business together and you do everything right, you'll be covered in the long run. Yeah. You know, you mm -hmm. set your shit up to where certain shit got to take place. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Now nah, that's real. And. uh Earlier this year, you started your own label, uh, Kitchen on Fire. Um, how long have you had this idea for your label? So I've been having an idea for a label for a long time. It really started off with a with a dream for having a production team. Okay. But I don't want to really do that until I'm at a point to where I know I can hit, 
be real beneficial for the next person in changing that situation off the jump versus mm -hmm. being able to help them get placement because I can do that and I have close homies that I do that with anyway. But mm -hmm. really, <clears throat> I'm trying to think which came first. I think I was that was just something I was quoting. It was a hashtag that I was just putting up. Mm -hmm. And then uh, last year I had a little incident with my hand. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when I was in the hospital, man, you know, I had a couple of surgeries. So I think the second stint, I was in there for like a week and a half and just in there, you know, doing my, still being, thinking about what I got going on and things, it, it clicked to me. It was like, that's what I'm gonna name my label, like kitchen on fire. Like <laughs> kitchen was literally on fire, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know, it, it at that time it just came to me. So it was a little hashtag I had been, been running and been running and then it just made sense. It was more so at first just like kitchen on fire, you know, Sheriff the Kitchen, he he got a lot of shit going boom, boom, yeah. on fire, but you know, it makes sense. When people get with me, y'all gotta come to the kitchen, you know what I'm saying? And the kitchen on fire, so yeah. come through here and get that, that fire, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and what is the story on how you burnt your hand? Okay, story on how I burnt my hand, man. It was on Memorial Day. I was trying to, I had a whole bunch of family, friends, people that I fuck with with music and shit over to my crib and I'm going you know what I'm saying, cook some little fish for my people, man. You know what I'm saying? How my pops be doing with the little deep fry with the propane gas and shit. And yeah. man, when it got his little set up from him, took it to the house, set it up. And we got the grill going too, and I must have cut it on and went inside to get the fish. Mm -hmm. And but by me not been and did this shit before and didn't really think that deep into it, yeah, I had fucked up and I cut them. When I came back out, man, the pot was on fire. You know what I'm saying? And me just thinking like irrational and not thinking sensible in the heat of the moment, panicking. I tried to. I was thinking like barbecue grill, slide it, try to slide it out. Like, cause it's, it's right on, in the garage. I, like I was cooking it in the garage is how my dad do. So the flames, I'm like, oh my God, that shit for the kids. And it's right up underneath the studio. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Gotta so get I'm this like, outside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, fuck. So I fucked around, tried to slide it. And like the second time I scooted it, it, the, uh, it just splashed out. It didn't even turn over or no shit. It just, and man, when the shit hit my hand, man, I didn't know what had happened. Like I damn near rent, took off running out in the grass, rubbed my hand in the grass and shit. And got up and like my shit was just hanging. Like I posted that shit on IG, like that shit was really crazy. But man, alarm going off because the smoke going in the house <laughs> and the fire, they on the motherfucking intercom, fire truck come. Long story short, this shit went out by itself, man. You hear oh, me? really? <laughs> went out by itself, man, eventually. Just burnt all the grease out the motherfucker. The whole basket that was in that bitch, that hole was nothing remaining, just melted. But that's how this shit happened on Memorial Day. And you know what I'm saying? I'm blessed, though, because it could have been a lot oh, yeah. worse. Like, Because I was kind of down about this shit not being able to make beats and do the shit I want to do. Yeah. Cause this shit was fucked up. Like I had to get all of this shit back. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. so it could have got on the underside that did some nerve damage. It could have splashed up in my face. My kid, I got kids, you know what I'm saying? One of my little boys could have been out there. So it's house could have burned down a lot. So, you know what I'm saying? That's all, it's a learning lesson. They know not to play with fire. You hear me? That's a good lesson like, right there. Straight up. Like, <laughs> You see what happened to daddy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yep, that's how that shit happened, man. So <laughs> that's how the kitchen on fire. Yeah, I was gonna say, it inspired your label. Fire. It's really inspired, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A whole little crazy story behind it too. Yeah, yeah. And uh, right now, do you have any artists signed to uh, the label? Yep, uh, my little brother, my blood brother, Slick Nick. Okay. And uh, one of my close partners, High Life Z. Okay. And my girl, Bree, you're gonna be hearing, uh, she on the album that they got out called Kitchen on Fire. She on this song called Cake, but hmm. she got a bunch of shit coming out. She gonna be on some shit with Scotty ATL, working on some shit with Trip 4. And, okay. Um, but she got on R&B too. Okay. Yep. And what are some of your goals for the label? Man, the you know, the ultimate goal to, to 
<clears throat> get to some Def Jam, bad boy type of shit. Yeah. You know, QC, that's the modern thing right there. So I'm, mm. you know, I, I got a lot of talented artists that I work with that's not necessarily all the way known right now or, and man, they need to be heard, you know what I'm saying? So if I could grow my platform and have a, you know what I'm saying, platform to present them to, that's what I want to do on the, on the biggest scale you can. Yeah. And uh, what are you going to look for when you sign new artists? Man, what I look for is I look for hunger. Not too hungry, though, but like extra thirsty. But look for somebody that really want it, man. That's serious about their craft. That got a good work ethic, you know what I'm saying? And that sounds good. Something that's, you know, not looking for the next somebody else. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking for the next them, original. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's really what I look for when I'm any future artist that I sign to. Something special, man, you know yeah. what I mean? And I, I've been meeting a lot of them. Hmm. I yeah. got a project coming with my partner, Easton. I'm doing his whole project. He was on the uh, first uh, verse of Swag Surfing. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's him on the first verse, but we got a whole project we are working on. And it's gonna uh -huh. be crazy, like really crazy. It's worth checking out. Hmm. He's next up. He, he he lit out here at ATL. Hmm. Uh, what else you working on right now? Um, working on EP with High Life Z and Slick Nick again, my two okay. artists. Um, for the drop of four song EP, uh, got the single I'm about to drop uh, beginning the next month with Duke Deuce hmm. called With the Shit. Hmm. Um, Easton, I got my shit coming with Easton. More new Don trip working with uh, Duke Deuce on some shit for his shit. We got okay. plenty of shit. Uh, Scotty ATL, hmm. Eight Ball, a lot of shit, man. And more of them seeds that I've been planting. You feel? Yeah. They constantly sprouting up. Yeah. All right, Shaffer. Anything else you want to add? Man, that's it, man. Y'all appreciate you having me out. You know what I'm saying? You know I fuck with y'all tough, yeah. man. Every yeah, time I come to the back. city, yeah, I gotta come through and fuck with my folk, man. Dirty glove, man. Yeah. 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 I'm disappointed in you. So disappointed.